Ridiculous That's going to be the first 10 seconds of the video. Positive thoughts, positive energy, positive thinking. Oh, Jesus. This is what living on a boat's like. Good morning from the deck of Ruby Rose 2. <laughs> a little bit of banana stuck in my throat from breakfast. Day three on board. Today, mainsail. We have a few things to do. Basically, everything was kind of like tied up for transit, so I've taken the two lines off. I need to just un get the sail bag open. I then have to kind of reattach the main halyard. All the blocks and all the pulleys need to be washed with fresh water and then lubricated because they're all gunged up from salt. And so my job this morning before the sun gets high enough to bake me is to swap out the new batten box. We've got a new batten box that's been delivered for the broken batten that we had, that I think you remember from an episode that we made when the main sail wouldn't come down. Yeah, it's a long, long while ago. So basically we sailed into an anchorage and the main sail wouldn't come down because a screw had backed out on the, the mast of the, the track. So basically the only way to get the main sail down was to haul it down. And by hauling it down, we broke a, a batten box. Now the batten boxes are beautifully well made. They are made of carbon fiber with titanium pulleys and screws and all sorts of things inside them. Well, titanium, pins but the problem is they are <clears throat> carbon fiber has strength in one direction but in a, not in another so if you put it in a certain way it will fracture so we fractured the the batten box and as such the main cell dropped but now we have to put a new batten box on because we don't have a batten and if we don't have a batten essentially it, will just, it won't be good for the main cell so i've got to fit a new batten box today so today my job is to get the main cell up get it running get the bits washed out get just fresh water over it the biggest problem i have we turned up here and apart from damage to the tv aerial which is just a bracket which is bent and that just needs to be replaced someone on the ship and i am going to give them a i'm going to give them a pass in that i imagine that whatever they were doing was an emergency that couldn't wait someone welded or did some angle grinding on that ship and all the angle grinding dust all the welding dust landed on our deck and you think, oh, that deck, all in our pocket. everywhere. So basically, the problem is that it is that it is just our our deck is just covered. I thought it was sand. I yeah. did think it was sand, and I was jet washing it off, and I'm like, oh, this Sahara sand is hard. But actually, it here. yeah, let's get a good close up of that. I mean, I've gotten quite a few. I mean, th this is just here, but it's it's literally everywhere. You can see it. Yeah, everywhere. But there are areas that are just super bad. I've got to go over literally with a rag and apply oxalic acid to the entire boat, which it's just very, very time consuming and very, very frustrating. I understand that things need to be done, but I'm super because honestly, if I was to work eight hours on cleaning this deck, I would probably be able to get half of it done. Oh yeah. It's just, there is so it's much work. It's like the whole season. But it won't take, yeah. It, 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 it will take us weeks and weeks and weeks. It will take us weeks and weeks. And so anyway, I actually, by the time lunch arrives, because it's getting very, very hot, we will have a functioning mainsail. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Uh, my, uh, hello, are you filming? Yes, but also, what's going on with the gloves on the clothesline? I'm trying to reuse them because I've only got a little use out and I've only got 10 pairs and I, I, I don't need them until I can find new, new ones. I have my Imperial and my metric Allen keys and shit from Doyle is this, which is a little carbon fibre batten car. So thank you to John for expediting this to us. So this is going to go on... Oh shit, they were... Then put the pen in. We've got no main stuff. Okay, crisis averted. Nick, in his wisdom, kept the old button box and he's found it. And so we have well, the second. pin. Don't speak too fast. This is seized and I've got to try and unseize it. Okay, well, that's a better position than we were in two minutes ago. So positive thoughts, positive energy, positive thinking. A little bit of uh, magic from the gods of uh, allowing us to get shit done. So this needs to separate. Can I do anything to help? That's no, nice. you can pray. You can issue a silent pray to the gods of this coming undone. Anyone on the internet side, well, you should have just heated it. I actually don't understand if heating titanium causes problems with it. So I'd rather not heat it and just use force. Mm. Is this pink stuff? 
Yeah. It's a lot tight. Ah, oh, that's what it is. How come I saw that all over the boat? I've been seeing like strings of that. I'm sure I've seen that. Well, when we took Doyle, use it for everything. Okay. Loctite is honestly. Like, Th there was stuff in the um, galley yesterday. It was all on the floor? No. <laughs> you know what that was? <laughs> what? That was the uh, dried out mango cordial that came from <laughs> the lid of the cordial bottle that we transported from Malaysia. So, yes, please never mistake dried mango cordial for Loctite. I thought we were remarkably similar. You knew what I was talking about, which means it looks the same. This Loctite tastes particularly mango -y. This. <laughs> like this is like what well, this depends on whether we go sailing. <laughs> it's true. Without this, we don't go sailing. That's going to be the first 10 seconds of the video. Without this, we don't go sailing. Ironically enough, the lack of a drop of Loctite caused the mast screw to, un to, to, to kind of back out, mm. which caused this to break. And this problem is caused by Loctite. Yeah, so wow. literally at two ends of a, not a problem, of a, so that we need to work through. I would go so far to say, if you don't have Loctite on a boat, you probably shouldn't be on the boat. It is just like, it's just the most, you have to have Loctite, but also buy the right Loctite. There's different strengths. Do you know what Loctite is for those of people who don't know? I'm pretty sure it's dried mango cordial. <laughs> In a pinch you can, yes, you can. <laughs> dried mango cordial instead of Loctite. It's like glue. Is it not like glue? It's actually a liquid plastic and the liquid plastic sets when uh, in without the presence of oxygen or under pressure. I don't know what makes it set, but essentially you put it onto threads and it goes from a liquid state to a solid state. We could do an episode on titled Is a Boat Workshop Really Necessary? where you, you can just do like a full tour of your workshop and we can talk about whether you've been using it or not. The Loctite should go on the threads, but I'm not putting it on the threads because one, it's difficult, but if I put it into the little screw holes, it should engage. So I've like literally just put one turn on these to locate them all. Then I'll put Loctite into here. And the reason I'm not put, I'm doing it this way is, well, one, I can control the Loctite, but two, it's got to go through all these layers of fabric. And if I don't, if I do it this way, if I put them on the, if I put it on the actual, the, the nuts, it will all get washed. It will just get pulled away. So, you know, put that in there, drop in there, and I'll take the excess out. And it's not, it's not an ideal solution, but it's what we have. One quarter turn, more resistance on that one. That resistance, yeah, and a bit more. The next part of this whole sequence is to get the this put into the mast and then the batten put in, and I can't remember which goes first. I actually think you put this in and then you put the batten in. I think so, because you don't routinely take the batten cars out of the yeah. uh, track. Batten car is in. Batten is next. It's complicated because uh, it won't feed through. I think I'm going to have to put the camera down. Put the camera down. All right, I'm going to put the camera down and I'll see you on the other side. God almighty. Okay, that is done. Got the batten in. The key to success, I think, because the, um, what's the, like the sleeve that the batten goes in? What's that called? The batten pocket kept on like wrinkling. And so the sail was all puckered and we just couldn't get it straight. And then um, we realized that the pin in the batten car was like preventing that end of the sail from moving around the way we needed it to. So anyway, we took that out. And finally with brute force, really, we uh, we got the batten in, but that was not easy. It's not easy. That was not easy. That job is done now. A nice drink of water. four o'clock in the morning. We just got woken up by these really strong winds. I think it's blowing 30 knots in a minute, but it was blowing 45 before. And I'm assuming that we're not the only ones awake right now. Hopefully this will pass soon. But wow. Like suddenly, out of nowhere, just, oh, this crazy gust just hit us. It's actually a boat. I wonder whether that's like, an official boat or just um 
someone else. That monohole over there is definitely dragging, but I'm very much hoping the owners are awake. I'm not surprised because they, I saw them anchor. Like their technique was terrible. They were reversing at about like three knots as they were putting the anchor down. They put down hardly any chain. And I thought to myself, geez, I'm glad that they're not in front of us. Is there anyone in front of us? There's nothing in front of us, is there? There's anyone by really the boat's swings. There's two boats there. They've been there for, I think those two boats in front of us have been there for quite a few days. So I think that that's probably okay. Literally, I got up at two o'clock and there was literally, there was no wind. The boat was moving in a circle and now the wind went from zero to, I think, what did you see? 45 knots? 45, yeah. 45 knots. Oh, Jesus. This is what living on a boat's like. If you're just in a house right now, then it doesn't matter if there's like 40 knots of wind outside. You're like, fast asleep anyway. I mean, the, the wind has dropped. It's down to 17 knots now. So basically we have a protocol for doing things like this. The first is to get the engines ready to move. So if the anchor starts dragging or the wind picks up, so you can actually just take a lot of stress off the anchor chain by motoring into it. Uh, we, we touch wood, have held, or we may have actually dragged it, moved a little bit backwards, but the anchor's holding fine. The second thing we did, because there's a lot of boats in this anchorage, is uh, get a roving fender out. We don't, there's nothing in front of us, but there is a boat that is, it's a monohull that came in yesterday, seems to have a lot of trouble anchoring and on, just have been erratically moving in front of us trying to anchor. So you can, I don't know if you can see, but they're just, they don't have an anchor light on. They've just got their, um, just their navigation lights, just a green light at the minute. And they're literally just doing laps. And it's like, why? If you're not planning to anchor, then go out into deeper water. Don't like do laps around all the boats that are at anchor. Just go out like 200 meters that way. There's nothing. Just a little update. <clears throat> I could have gone to bed an hour ago, but he's jilling around in front of me. Clearly not a what he's meant to be doing. Anyway, morning. Fast forward a couple of hours and the sun is up. Everyone is, I think, roughly where they're meant to be. And what a start of the day. <laughs> I think that we're going to be very sleepy today. As is probably everyone in this anchorage. Hello. Undies. Clean undies. <laughs> okay, lucky me. Well, it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to f***ing bed, love. Okay. Happy birthday. So, oh, I went back to bed. Honestly, by 6.30, I was like a wreck. It is like having three or four shots of espresso, finding like the wind going from zero to 44 that fast. Anyway, so this morning the plan was to get the sails on. Hello. I'm going to be doing this all summer. So, oh. so um, just to clarify, so we need to get the jib up, the screecher up, but this bow sprit we're going to leave until we're on. We can leave it. I mean, realistically, what it needs to have is it needs a line put around it so yeah. that it cannot be lost. Yeah. Yeah. And I put it this way: in 13 meters of water, I can't, I can't retrieve that. I think it's before. best that we wait until we're in a marina. We don't need it. Yeah. We just can't fly the asymmetric. We're not going to be doing any downward yeah. sailing over the next. What I want to do is go and look at all the mechanisms for everything at the front. So I want to look at the bow roller mechanism. Yeah. Um, because it is just full of shit, then it all needs to be lubricated. You've got to disassemble all this, make sure all these bearings run free, make sure that this halyard runs free. So this is the jib halyard. It was all kind of zip tied together for transit. So I just want to wash all these. I just want to wash it. I want to take the tension off this, make sure these wheels spin freely. I mean, this is a greased bearing, but there's just crap up here. And if I pull this up, it's just going to get full of shit. I mean, you can see actually all like, you can feel it. Yeah. It's really rough. I mean, this is actually seized, look. The clutches are jammed, and the clutches, because of the nature of the way the clutch works, is they have to, um, you have to be able to pull line through when the clutch is down. And I think that they're sufficiently gunged up that actually they need me to get a toothbrush in there and start cleaning them, like just cleaning the shit out of them. So we need to get the jib up. Can't think of anything I'd rather do. I know that you're curious. I know that you're strong. Someone next door just waved to me. Maybe they recognise our boat. These shackles need to be re-seized. It's a 
drag this round, spin it round this way, clockwise and up. 90 degrees. Yeah. Who knows if we get joy or sorrow? Stay true to that fire in your heart. Now the plan here is that you don't have to pull too hard. I don't want to put stress on that joint, yeah? Alrighty. Are you ready? A bit more. Yeah. Ooh. One, two, three, go. Just bring that underneath. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Just on this side. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to put you in the shade. Tell me when you're in place and mind your fingers, yeah? Okay. Yeah. This is why we needed a no wind morning. It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights and wandering. Okay. Before Good you make it ah, shut the buttons. Oh no. We always forget the bloody buttons. Jib is up. We did put the buttons in. We didn't film it because the camera was overheating. But you can see it's up, it's filled, buttons are in. Happy days. Okay. Good job, one more big thing done. We will be sailing the Mediterranean, Greece and Turkey all this season. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Apparently they're the same thing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And we will all see you next week. Goodbye.